VX nerve agent is the most deadly chemical weapon ever produced. It was accidentally discovered in the early 1950s in Britain while two chemists, Ranajit Ghosh and J.F. Newman, were working on a new pesticide to kill insects. Once they discovered it, how extremely lethal it was to humans, it was obviously shelved as a viable pesticide. But samples were sent to the British Armed Forces Research Facility at Porton Down for evaluation and after studying the molecules, several different varieties of the agent was synthesized. But VX was the most effective of the group. Beginning in 1959, the United States Army began volunteer testing of VX on humans. Yes, you heard that right. A guy named Dr. Van Sim voluntarily underwent intravenous infusion with VX to evaluate its effects and to establish a minimum lethal dosage in humans. Yeah, he allowed them to administer micrograms of VX to an IV and monitor its effects on him. Not a crazy man at all. Anyways, after about 3.5 hours of slowly dosing him with the nerve agent, he suddenly became pale and delirious, and the experiment was immediately terminated and he was given the antidote. He fully recovered. It was found that only about 10 micrograms is more than a lethal dose of VX on an average human adult male. To serve as a deterrent against the Soviet Union, the U.S. began producing mass quantities of VX in 1961 at the Newport Chemical Depot in Indiana. The entire U.S. stockpile of VX was produced there and production stopped in 1968. Approximately 4,400 tons of VX nerve agent was produced during its production run, enough to kill every single human being on the planet a few times over. But finally, thankfully, in 1969, the U.S. unilaterally halted production and transport of all chemical weapons. This is where Operation Chase comes into play. Operation Chase, which literally stands for Cut Holes and Sink em, was a United States Department of Defense program for the disposal of unwanted munitions at sea and was in effect from May of 1964 until the early 70s. Munitions were loaded in, up into uh, World War II era Liberty ships to be scuttled once they were at least 250 miles off of shore. While most of this type of disposal was just conventional weapons such as bullets, mortar rounds, old airdrop bombs, ex, you know, expired torpedoes, that type of thing, but they also began doing it to chemical weapons. In Operation Chase 2, they loaded another Liberty ship up with 7,348 tons of munitions at Naval Weapons Stations Earl in New Jersey on September 17, 1964. When the ship sank, five minutes later there were three unexpected and very large explosions. Then loose debris and an oil slick floated up to the surface. The explosion was so large that it registered on seismic equipment all over the world. So chemical weapons were dumped this way in 1967 starting with Operation Chase 8. Mustard gas and GB filled M55 rockets were loaded on board a mothballed merchant ship, the SS Corporal Eric Gibson, and was then sank in deep water off the continental shelf on the eastern seaboard. In June of 1968, large amounts of GB and VX nerve gas were sank in the ocean after being sealed in 10 containers. And then in August of 1968, the Army dumped more mustard gas. And then Operation Chase 10 is when it gets really dicey. In 1969 and 1970, with over 3,000 tons of rockets filled with VX nerve agent were put into tubs, had concrete poured around them, and once it was hardened, the blocks were loaded on board another mothball junker and sank off, sank off the coast. This time around, though, the public awareness of this program had increased. The dumping of nerve agents in the ocean off the coast of New Jersey and New York became very public when NBC, ABC, and CBS all ran stories about it. Ultimately, this led to the military getting a black eye. It was already a controversial era for the military due to the Vietnam War and public perception of the military dumping extremely hazardous nerve agents into the ocean was met with a with some massive amount of blowback. The Chemical Corps in the U.S. Army was almost completely disbanded because of this. The Marine Protection Research and Sanctuary Act of 1972 was signed as a direct result of the chase operations. This prevented future programs from dumping weapons or hazardous chemicals into the oceans by the U.S. government. Finally, the general public's attitude and tolerance for such weapons was almost completely gone after this. After various armistice treaties were signed in NATO countries and 
with the former Soviet Union, uh, destruction of all chemical weapons was in full swing by the late 1990s. And the entire U.S. stockpile is scheduled to be eliminated by the end of 2023.